Hi there, I'm Angela Sharp, and welcome to The Daily Mix. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Actually, week. I missed you last week because we were celebrating Martin Luther King Day, so I'm happy to be back. We've got a great show for you. But I have to tell you, during this last week when we were off and I was gone, I was pumping some gas, and look what came up on the gas pump. So I always just pump it, walk away, come back when it's like done. It was 2021. So what I wanna know is, is this like a good luck? That means 21, 2021 is gonna be great? Or is it bad luck? I haven't decided yet. We're, I don't know, a couple 25 days in and I still have no idea. <laughs> also, during this course of time that I was away, I was made into a meme. Okay, so I do not know the person who made this meme. And that photo of me in the workout clothes was for a gym, for a gym locally. So I'm guessing that's how she found it. And I just kind of love what she put on it and made me laugh, especially because if anybody knows me, they know that I cannot flirt to save my life. So I thought this was actually pretty funny. My sister has been made into a meme like two times while she was on Blue Crew. She like skates and cleans the ice in front of the goaltenders and goaltenders tend to be looking at her behind. It's a whole thing. I just thought that was pretty funny. So speaking of memes, you know Bernie Sanders, he's been memes all over town. That's right, he was the ambush right there behind Apollo saving a goal. He was over there at SLU, you know, waiting for some basketball to start. Of course, he was at the Enterprise Center waiting for a Blues game. He was even at Hollywood Casino. Yeah, he was waiting for it and left bank books. I gotta tell you, I just love how no matter what political side you're on, Bernie Sanders can kind of steal the show just by wearing some mittens and of course being Bernie Sanders. That's pretty great. I am so excited about the guest on our show today. Steve Savard agreed to join me today. I mean, talk about an awesome career here in St. Louis. Sports director, head news anchor, Emmy Awards, and of course, the voice of the Rams. I was so excited that he agreed to come on with me. He's gonna talk about his new show, Middays, on 590 The Fan. We're gonna hear all about it. So let's get started on today's Daily Mix. Love Packages Donation Drive is currently underway and Diamond Diva Empowerment Foundation, they need your help more than ever. Their goal this year is to provide two to three months worth of full-size hygiene products to 2,500 women and families living in shelters and safe houses due to domestic violence. Full-size products can be dropped off at the foundation's office on Shoto, or contactless donations can be made online through February 5th. To learn more or make a donation, follow them on social media or visit 2 Hopefully the community can come together and help them reach their goal, or maybe even more. Now, the need for blood and platelet donors is constant, and soon Comptroller Darlene Green will be hosting her semi-annual community blood drive for the Red Cross. She holds this drive each year during Black History Month to honor Dr. Charles Drew, who developed the first large-scale blood banks during World War II. Right now, African-American blood donors are critically needed to help patients battling sickle cell disease. The blood drive will take place on Monday, February 8th, from 11 to 3 at City Hall. You can schedule an appointment by calling 1-800-RED-CROSS or online at redcrossblood.org. And in case you didn't know, the Red Cross is testing all donations for COVID-19 antibodies. The results are usually available online about a week after donation. Actually, I've had two friends kind of recently donate blood and they didn't even realize they had been sick and they came back that they had COVID-19 antibodies. So kind of interesting to look into that. If that's something you're curious about, why not do a good thing, donate some blood, and then you can find out. 
So have you been missing your movie nights? Okay. I know I have. And by that, what I actually mean is going to a theater to watch a movie. Well, what if I told you you can? And you can have the whole theater to yourself. I think this would be so cool, especially on Valentine's Day, if I had a Valentine. So Marcus Theaters has actually been offering private cinema experiences for several months. But right now, they have a really great special going on, giving you the chance to rent an entire theater for up to 20 people for just under $100. You just pick the day, your movie, your snacks, and who you want to join you. This is so cool. Now, the special pricing is only going on through the end of January, so you need to act fast if you want to book with Marcus. You can find a theater near you and make your reservation by going to MarcusTheaters.com. But that's not all, you guys. Maybe you don't want to go to Marcus for some reason, or I don't know, maybe you want to go to an AMC theater. Well, they are doing it too. That's right. They're also offering private theater rentals. So you can host a private movie screening for up to 20 guests. They also start at just under $100, but it can go up in price depending on if you pick a new release or what snacks you pick, you know, that kind of add on stuff. But basically, same way. You choose your theater, your showtime, and your movie from their list of fan favorites and new releases. And you can book them online and learn more at amctheater.com. I'm so excited. So let's go to the movies. I was going to sing, but then I decided not to. So our, I think that's pretty fun. And at least it gives you something to do, right? If you're looking for even more options to get out and have some fun, of course, you can always visit one of the great parks, like Forest Park. Did you know it's one of the largest urban parks in the country? It's also been nominated by USA Today's 10 Best as one of the best city parks in North America. Last I checked, they were in the lead, and you can help keep them there by voting once a day through February 15th. Go to 10best.com and click on Reader's Choice to vote on the best city park. Now, if you would prefer to stay indoors, right now, then be sure to check out Opulence in the Grand Hall. The 1920s are roaring back with this pop-up cocktail experience at St. Louis Union Station. The pop-up features a menu of 1920s inspired cocktails served in the Grand Hall, a room that was vital part of Union Station during the Prohibition era. Opulence is open nightly from 4 to 11 through March 6th and seating is on a first come, first serve basis. You can learn more at stlouisunionstation.com. And you know, Valentine's Day is right around the corner, so you might want to keep that in mind for a romantic night out. I know it seems like really early to be thinking about Valentine's Day, but it's not, especially in a pandemic, and especially if there's a special gift you want to get and make sure you have it on time. Now, if you need a little inspiration, here's a really cool idea. You're going to see what I did there in just a second. Why not adopt a horned puffin from the St. Louis Zoo? How cute, right? Their Valentine's Day adoption package includes all kinds of fun stuff, including a plushed horn puffin, personalized adoption certificate, name on the zoo parents donor wall, and more. Now, if you plan on ordering online or by phone, you need to do that by January 31st to ensure it's delivered on time. You can also purchase in person through February 14th, as long as supplies last. To learn more and to order online, visit stlzoo.org slash valentine adoption. So cute, right? Now, you know, love is always in the air, but love is definitely in the air during the weekend of Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel exhibit at America Center. Check out this video from Explore St. Louis that captured a very special moment that marked the end of the exhibit. I mean, love is in the air, so congratulations to the couple to be. 
You guys, I have been so excited about this interview all week since he agreed to come on. Pretty much needs no introduction. I think, what, 26 years on television in his hometown, a couple Emmys, and of the voice of the St. Louis Rams, Steve Savard is joining me now. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's my pleasure. I'm thrilled that anybody who's that excited to talk to me at this point, at this stage in my life. So I'll take what I can get at this point, but I, I'm happy to be on with you, Angela. Oh, well, I'm so happy to have you. I mean, a huge career that you've had and are still having as you've now went back into the sports and radio side of it. But can you kind of walk us through what it was like for you to get a job in your hometown and then to have such a long run on TV here? You know, it wasn't anything I tried to do. It was, uh, it just, it fell into my lap. I was, I wasn't fixed on trying to get back to St. Louis, but it just worked out that way. But I, I will tell you this, the one French benefit that I had no idea would mean so much was my parents being able to flip on the tube and watch their kid five nights a week, whether he was in the sports chair or the anchor chair, and then listen to their kid uh, call NFL games. Our, our, my parents shared my dream that I was going to play 10 or 12 years in the NFL. and. It, my, my those dreams fell short. A couple of training camps got kicked to the curb at age 24 with a busted neck. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of routes I could have taken, but um, staying close to the game of football and having my parents be able to listen to their kid call NFL games in the hometown for 16 years, it's been a blessing and I've been blessed for sure. I mean, I just love that you mentioned your parents because I think it is a thrill for parents when their child is on like locally and they can hear it. But for you to be able to stay involved in football and be basically the voice of the Rams for so long, what was it like for you to be able to stay involved in the game that, that didn't really work out for you to play? Well, it's it's a it's a it's a timely topic to talk about. Um, you know, I started playing the game when I was seven and I wanted to play in the National Football League. The guys that what's been cool about coming back to my hometown is I become friends with the men who inspired me when I was a kid to want to play pro football, the big former football Cardinals, the big red players, to get to know them, become some of their friends, uh, work with them on broadcasts. Um, that's That's been outstanding. And I've always wanted to stay close to the game. I just uh, I just didn't know I would be getting an opportunity in my hometown to call games for 16 years. And it's a shame they left, but I've never, it's never been about me with the Rams leaving, the people I felt bad for for the PSL holders, when people come up to me and say, hey, 21 years as a PSL holder, th they didn't get treated right and didn't get their money's worth. I feel for the people that count on that income on eight Sundays a year in downtown St. Louis and everything else. But uh, I, it was a blessing and it was a lot of fun to be close to the game for that long. I just, I just love everything you've been able to accomplish in your career with a couple Emmys and you were even able to pivot after let's say leaving being removed from your awesome tv job you're now pivoting back into sports yeah well that opportunity we I, john hadley who's running uh, kfns and he and i had discussed for a better part of a year about trying to come back to sports radio a little bit um the timing was never right uh, i just so happened that after september 17th i just so happened to have some free time <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it, the news came at a good time for me. I love St. Louis in the fall, September and October. I spent a lot, I, just, I spent three months playing golf and having fun. And so it was time for me to get my foot back in. Um, I worked really hard for a number of years in two jobs so that I could be in a position at some point that I could take a job that I wanted to take, not that I had to take, not that I felt pressure financially. And so uh, I've been blessed about that. The, the job I'm taking right now isn't making me rich, um, but it's it's been fun. I've got my foot in the water, back into sports, and we'll see where it goes. I don't know if it's a long-term fit or not, but for now, it's scratching the itch. Well, I mean, I love it. You're on 12 to 2, correct, on 590? 1 to 3 on Mondays through Thursdays, and then 12 to 2 on Friday. 12 to 2 on Friday. And you're covering everything sports-related. Is that uh, just local or all sports news? No, I mean, it's it's a it's a mix of both. So, you know, like today, we'll obviously be talking a lot about Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes and um, the National Football League. And it's topical, and sometimes I, I want to venture off into maybe some pop culture. and uh, But we won't, we won't stray too far. From, from sports. So, um, you know, sports is an escape. It's supposed to be an escape. It's supposed to be fun. And with everything going on in the world and what we just turned the page on 2020, it's nice to it's nice to broadcast about things that really don't change your life, not life and death matters, instead of something that, uh, things that are so serious that they really do change your life. So it's been a nice change for me. Well, I love that. Uh, covering so many St. Louis sports, what has been one of your highlights in your career? 
Well, I think the, the highlights have been the, I think the championship celebrations. I mean, the Cardinals World Series parades are always special. Uh, for me, the, the Rams Super Bowl uh, and the parade the next day in freezing cold temperatures. Uh, we were frozen solid for four hours, but I would have stood there another four hours broadcasting because everything just came together perfectly that season. And what I really love about St. Louis is that when we celebrate a championship, we're not derelicts. We don't destroy things. We don't set buildings on fire when we're happy. When we're happy, we celebrate. You know, we may, there may be some people that uh, overindulge, um, but, you know, public intoxication or dare I say public urination is about the worst thing we report on. You know, we're not setting cars on fire and, and turning uh, police cars over. And I think, I think what we experienced in the summer and you'll understand this, and I know you'll weigh in on this too, and believe you know where I'm going here. The summer of uh, of uh, 2019 with the Blue Stanley Cup run. I mean, that was. I'm 57 years old. Uh, when I was five years old, Dan Kelly introduced me to the game. That's how great the guy was. He had, he educated my entire family, um, and we've been Blues fans, hardcore Blues fans. Even the time I didn't live in St. Louis, I was still a hardcore Blues fan. So. To see the Blues win the cup and to see a, a, a city star for that celebration come together like we did in June of 2019, that's a day I will always, always remember. And we're super happy to have you back on the radio that we can tune in. So remind everybody when they can tune in and hear your show and hear all about you. 590 The Fan, KFNS, uh, Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday. Like today, we'll be on from one to three. Middays with Savvy on Friday airs 12 to two. And is there any way that people can keep up with you personally and see what you're doing? Do you have the whole social media? Well, I, I'm not. I'm not an Instagram or TikTok guy. Uh, I think. <laughs> I don't, you don't I, this? You're not going to do any TikTok dances? Uh, I'm not. A, I'm not a. No, no. I'm not a dancer. I'm not a selfie guy. But uh, I am on Twitter. Uh, you can find me at Steve Savard STL, and I'm also on Facebook. And I've always enjoyed. One of the things I miss about being on TV is my interaction with. Uh, viewers on, on Facebook, whenever I post it, I try very hard to always interact with people who spend the time. That's why I do this interview. I'd be a hypocrite if I've spent the last 30 years of my life asking people for their time so I can make a living. So when people ask me, and a lot of it occurred during when I was broadcasting the Rams games when they were really good, I would do three or four radio shows nationally, maybe maybe a day sometimes. Um, but I always, wanna, I always wanna do that because I've asked that too, so. I miss the interaction, as much interaction as I used to have uh, on Facebook, and maybe one day we'll get back to it. But yeah, I'm on Facebook and Twitter. Wonderful. Uh, everybody should follow you and check that out. And I will be tuning in today. So thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure. My pleasure. And after you guys go and follow Steve Savard and check out his radio show, make sure you follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. You can drop us a line at The Daily Mix at stltv.net. That's going to do it for The Daily Mix, but keep it right here on STL TV and Experience St. Louis.